Welcome to today's SMPTE Standards Update webcast. This quarter's topic is 3 gigabit per second SDI for transport of 1080p 50 or 60 3G UHDTV1 slash 4K and beyond. This is actually part one of a three-part series. Welcome, everybody. I'm your host, Joel Welch, SMPTE's Director of Professional Development. I want to thank you for joining us today. I know it's sometimes difficult to break away from our busy schedules, but uh, I think you'll find this an interesting series. Today's speaker is John Hudson from Semtech. And John, I just noticed that I neglected to insert your title. So when you start off, if you would uh, just uh, give us your title, that will get uh, that out of the way and, and everybody will understand what role you play at Semtech. So John, without further delay, the floor is yours. Thanks very much, Joe. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is John Hudson and I'm the Director of Product Definition and International Standardization at the Semtech Gen and Products Group. Welcome. So just before we, uh, we dive into the three gig standards in detail, I just wanted to have a little bit of preamble to set some historical context uh, around SDI and its development and evolution through SEMTI. Um, this chart here just kind of indicates uh, a timeline of the development of uh, SDI standards uh, beginning back in the 80s and 90s when, uh, you know, the standard for uh, digital standard definition and high definition formats was developed, leading to, you know, the ITUR 601 and 709 formats and the uh, 7274 and 296 image standards. And along with these SD and HD image format standards, the serial digital interface was developed at the same time uh, to carry on compressed SD and HD real-time images uh, between systems in the professional domain. Um, there was also, prior to this, a, a parallel interface for both SD and HD digital. And for those who uh, can remember that far back, you probably remember the huge connectors and the thick, heavy cables that went along with that parallel interface. So the introduction of a, a single coax uh, connectivity for SDI was a real boon to the industry for digital pr uh, production. And so, you know, those early um, SDI standards, 7259, developed in 1989, um, was targeted uh, originally at about 270 megabits per second. The HDSDI standard, introduced almost 10 years later uh, at one and a half gig, um, really they were about, um, you know, to carry 1080i and uh, standard definition um, YCPCR422 signals. Um, you can see along the timeline, though, um, with the evolution of new production formats and requirements, this is very sensitive, sorry about that, um, there was a trend within the industry to move from single link interfaces uh, for an interim solution based on a uh, dual link. And in 1993, for the standard definition uh, production, RP174 was introduced uh, to allow um, the transport of RGB444 images um, over dual 270 links. And then in 2000, um, there was the uh, 540 standard, which I'm sure uh, many of you can remember, which once again turned those dual link interfaces into a single link. Exactly the same uh, process happened with the HD standard starting back in 98 with 7292. Um, a few years later, when we wanted to do 444 production, um, we introduced 7372, which is a dual one and a half gig standard. And then in 2006, uh, was the advent of the 3 gig SDI standard, which carried those same image formats over a single link. So what's interesting to take away from here is that the industry in terms of SDI data rates and image formats is actually on a, a pretty repeatable 10-year cycle, and that is still continuing through today, although it looks like um, you know, things are going to be speeding up in terms of serial digital interface rates over the next little while. And we'll talk about that shortly. Okay, so diving in, standards overview for 3 gig. The actual first 3 gig standard was uh, documented back in 2005 in ITUR BT 1120. And that first uh, 3 gig interface was restricted to 1920 by 1080p50 uh, YCPCR 4 to 2 10 bit. It wasn't until a year later in 2006 that SEMTI introduced 
um, the uh, 44 and 45 documents uh, for the uh, three gig SDN interface, which was much more comprehensive um, and covering a, a lot more uh, image formats than just the uh, YSPCR 42. So, for example, um, the 70 standard 45 also included a support for 720p444 production and also for a 12 bit signal production. At the same time, in 2006, uh, that the 3 gig standards 45 and 44, which is the physical layer uh, variant for 3 gig, and there was also 7297 was revised, um, which is the optical interface standard, uh, to also cover the 3 gig node. So in 2006, Senti had a complete suite of 3 gig SDI standards covering image and ancillary data mapping, electrical coax cable interfaces in 44, and an optical interface in Senti 297. So just taking a little bit further into the three gig standards, 7425 is the uh, mapping uh, standard. When that was introduced in 2006, it, it actually had three different um, mapping modes, um, which some of you may have heard of. There are three modes in this document, level A, which is a direct image mapping mode, level B, DL for dual mapping, and level B, DS for dual stream mapping. Level A is a direct mapping of the uh, incompressed images into a serial digital interface. And this mapping mode is essentially the equivalent of the one and a half gig uh, interface in terms of there being a 20 bit interface carrying uh, 10 bits carrying the Y data and 10 bits carrying the CBCR data. Um, so that, that's really the three gig equivalent of the one and a half gig mapping. Level B DL or dual link mapping was introduced uh, for a backwards compatibility mode with existing 7372 dual link interfaces um, so that we could carry uh, the dual link RGB 444 signals um, that were common in the industry at the time over a single three gig interface. There's also a level B dual stream mapping in 7425 and that's for um, concatenation of multiple streams. It's similar to the level B DL mapping mode uh, but it has a few less constraints in terms of what it can carry. So 7425, the mapping standard for 3 gig, includes three different mapping modes. And we'll talk a little bit more about the implications of this later in the presentation. The physical interface standard, 7424, um, basically this is the 3 gig equivalent of 7292, which is the 1.5 gig SDI standard. So this is the standard that includes all the electrical uh, signal requirements and parameters. It talks about the multiplex, scrambling, coding, um, et cetera, et cetera. This is where the uh, uh, rubber kind of hits the road in terms of uh, coaxial cable interface. As mentioned earlier, 7297, which is the uh, optical fiber interface, was also updated to include support for 3 gig. So that is now a uh, document now covers all SDI data rates from 143 megabits per second all the way through to three gigabits per second. Um, as well as uh, defining the optical characteristics uh, for an interface, 7297 uh, also has information in there about uh, laser safety testing um, and optical interface labeling, et cetera, et cetera, for compliance. I'm not gonna dive too, um, into too much detail on the physical interface standards in this meeting because um, part two and three of this PDB event will uh, cover that in much more detail. During the time that the 3 gig SDI standard has been uh, available, it's uh, seven or eight years now, there have been um, changes to the broadcast industry in terms of um, production image formats and, and the kind of work that we want to do. And so it's interesting that over that same eight year period, um, there's been a huge um, increase in uh, format production that drives the, stand, the interface bandwidth well beyond what 3 gig can uh, manage today. Uh, some of these new applications that are driving uh, real-time streaming media bandwidths are, are Stereo 3D, um, 1080p, 5060, 444 processing, UHD TV 1, and 4K D Cinema. We have a high frame rate D Cinema, and of course, UHD TV 2 production. And you can see from this chart here, um, this is leading to a bandwidth disparity in the sense that 
the um, new image formats and new production requirements uh, go well beyond what's possible on a single 3 gigabit per second interface. You can see from this chart, which lists out all of those image formats that I've um, just touched on, and also some of the proposed image formats and higher frame rates, uh, you can see that it's very easy we get to an almost 200 gig interface requirement for carrying these signals around um, the broadcast infrastructure of the future. Whereas, as you can see, with 7425 at 3 gig, we kind of top out at 1080p, 5060, YCBCR, 42 support. And anything beyond there is not covered by a single 3 gig link. And so, um, hence this bandwidth disparity is created because a lot of the broadcast infrastructure is, of course, built out to be 3 gig capable. Um, but how are we going to be able to support uh, these emerging formats on that current infrastructure? Well, as kind of a second response to um, these new requirements, SEMTI has continued with the evolution uh, of the SDI interface. Um, and in 2011, 2012, um, some new work was kicked off in SEMTI. Uh, just a quick update here on ST424 2012. There was a fairly minor revision of this document, which is published as the 2012 revision, uh, just to improve um, uh, some of the operational parameters in there and to add uh, provisions for the use of connector types other than the standard BNC, uh, which has been used in all SDI interfaces up until this date. The most significant change, though, occurred with the mapping uh, document 7425. And in 2011, this document was uh, split into become a multi-part document. Um, it was also revised to include support for D-Cinema production formats and to add support for 32 channels of audio. But the real significant thing, as I mentioned, was the splitting of this standard into multiple parts. And there was a, a 32NF40 multi-link 3 gig ad hoc group formed uh, to look at what it would take uh, to develop uh, SDI interface standards to address some of these emerging uh, formats, such as the stereoscopic uh, D-Cinema and also UHDTV1. So as you can see here now, the 45 document suite is now uh, six documents plus an index, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about each of these standards as we go through the presentation. This next slide shows the work of the 32 and F40 3 gig multi-link uh, ad hoc group. Essentially, the group set about um, creating dual link and quad link 3 gig SDI interfaces in support of uh, 3D and higher uh, resolution image formats. So you can see that essentially there were two tracks uh, for this group, single image mapping, which deals with higher resolution, higher dynamic range image format transport, and also stereoscopic image mapping uh, to handle requirements for um, stereo TV and stereo D cinema production. In all, the uh, three gig multilink ad hoc group developed uh, six new standards documents within the 7425 uh, document suite. Um, and you can see on the next slide a rough timeline for the work of the three gig multilink group. It's quite interesting that uh, when I was reviewing the slide deck, I actually created this slide must be two and a half years ago originally. And it's interesting that uh, it is actually still quite spot on in terms of uh, the timelines on development uh, of those standards from the Multilink 3 gig group. So just to, to talk about uh, the standards that were developed, um, in 2012, two standards were published by that group, 45-2, which is a single 3 gig interface for the carriage of stereo 1080 line um, signals. Basically, this was a method of taking the uh, 7292-2, which is dual link for stereo, and carrying those single signals on a single 3 gig link. At the same time, the first dual 3 gig standard was introduced, 7425-4, and that was a stereoscopic document. It's for carrying YCPCR 422 um, 1080p 5060 stereo signals on dual 3 gig links. The multi-link ad hoc group has continued to develop uh, the other documents in the series, starting with 425-3. This again is a dual 3 gig standard, and it is the first standard that actually addresses higher resolution formats, uh, such as the low frame rate 4K 
and UHDTV1 formats. This document is uh, well underway. In fact, um, 45-3 is very, very close to publication now. It's uh, completed its final audit in the standards community, and I would expect to see that document published likely before the end of this month. The two other standards that are in the suite, 45-5, which is the first quadlink 3 gig standard, that really is targeted at addressing UHTTV1 and 4K D-Cinema pro uh, progressive images in 444 and 12-bit format. This document is currently in comment resolution, um, so again, it's just, just about uh, spot on in terms of the schedule that's shown in this timeline. We should expect to see that document uh, published before the end of the year for sure. And the final document that's in this suite is 45-6, which is another stereo document which handles uh, the 2K progressive 444 and 4K low frame rate stereoscopic signals, again all carried on a quad 3 gig link. And I just uh, received a notification from uh, SEMT informing me that that document has actually entered into FCD ballot now. So once again, the uh, progress that's been made within that group um, is definitely on track for this whole suite of dual link and quad link 3 gig documents to all publish by the end of this year. So let's have a look at what uh, image formats are actually covered by the multi-link 3 gig standards. So the first one here is to look at um, the extensions to the 45 document suite in support of HDTV and 2K D cinema approaching. And this is really for uh, high uh, resolution bit depth and sampling in this case. So you can see from this chart up to 2K P5060 uh, uh, for 12-bit 42, 444 uh, processing, 7045-3, which is the dual 3 gig interface, now covers those image formats. Um, and you can see a single 3 gig link or 7372 dual link uh, is also available for the lower frame rates uh, for those formats. Moving on to look at a uh, high frame rate 2K D cinema production, um, you can see that uh, for uh, 96, 100 and 120 hertz uh, 2K D cinema, um, these can all be handled by either a, a dual 3 gig interface or a quad 3 gig interface, i.e. 12 gig payload. Um, 7428-11 is the uh, D-Cinema um, format for um, a standard for additional frame rates uh, for 2K presentation. And that document has, again, finished all of its balloting and, and document editing and is uh, ready for publication. And it's that document, 7428-11, that introduces high frame rate D-Cinema production, uh, which can be covered on either a dual 3 gig or a quad 3 gig link. Um, extending that to uh, 3D HD TV and 2K, 3D 2K D cinema production, again, um, 7425-4 is the standard for stereoscopic uh, on dual 3 gig links, and you can see that that uh, document suite is now extended to support up to 1080p 5060 uh, stereo on dual 3 gig links, and you can go uh, on a quad 3 gig link in 7425-6, to support higher dynamic range uh, or high resolution images uh, for stereoscopic image transport. Continuing with uh, it, the 3D HDTV and high frame rate 2K D cinema production, the same um, uh, 7045 6 quad link 3 gig standards uh, are able to support those new high frame rates of 4896. 100 and 120 hertz as they come along uh, for use within the cinema community and within the television production community. And kind of last but not least, um, the UHD TV1 and 4KD cinema formats are also touched on by the Quadlink uh, 3 gig standard 7045-5 as shown here in this chart. Um, and this covers um, you know, up to 4K P5060 or UHD TV1 for uh, P5060 for transport. And in fact, um, that Quadlink 3 gig standard, which I said is very, very close to publication now, um, there are a, a number of uh, products being released into the market today um, that actually implement that Quadlink interface 
uh, as the first generation of um, 4K and UHD TV1 um, production starts to roll out. So that covers all, basically um, the, the standards documents that are in the uh, 3 gig SDI suite. And I just want to touch on a few kind of general issues that may be of interest or, or are important when considering um, transitioning to a 3 gig SDI infrastructure and buying and um, implementing 3 gig SDI equipment. First of all, let's talk about the um, three different mapping levels that are in uh, the 7045 document suite. It's, it's important to note, especially when concerning 1080p 5060 transport, that both level A and level B DL mapping modes have very similar capabilities, but they are not compatible. And to convert between the level A and the level B DL mapping mode for 1080p 5060 images, there uh, will be at least one line uh, of video delay introduced at each conversion. And so, you know, within a, a broadcast infrastructure where you may be um, converting signals, adding embedded audio, audio or other ancillary data, every time that you make this conversion between level A and level BDL, uh, you will introduce yet another line of delay. And so that needs to be taken into consideration um, as you're designing new systems or uh, operating systems at 3 gig SDI. And really the advice here is, um, you know, you may want to consider making sure that as you build out a, a 3 gig or a 1080p 5060 production island, that you make it all one flavor or the other. You make sure it's all either level A or level B uh, to ensure that that interoperability is retained. So it's something that uh, you need to be careful of and think about. Make sure that your infrastructure and the equipment that you buy clearly identifies whether it's a level A or a level B um, uh, device in terms of 1080p 5060 support. Switching reasons um, are also um, an issue, and again, between level A and the level B dual stream mapping format of 7425-1, there are issues that need to be considered. Um, switching regions for uh, uh, all SDI interfaces are defined in 70RP168. The one thing that's very careful to note here is that within the 7425 standards, the level B dual stream mapping mode is really intended for the concatenation of two one and a half gig signals. And in fact, in level B DS uh, definition in 7425-1, there is not uh, a requirement for those two signals to actually be frame aligned. Um, unfortunately, if uh, you do have a piece of equipment that's uh, implemented level B DS, but doesn't frame align those signals uh, before implementing the transport, that could lead to issues when we look at synchronous switching within uh, a router, for example. And so the advice here really is uh, for um, installers and equipment users who are looking to use that dual stream interface uh, for the concatenation of signals within a facility, make sure that uh, the equipment that you buy does guarantee frame alignment uh, before you install it or switch it. Another thing that's uh, very important to note is that for all three gig standards, they mandate the use of the 7352 payload ID. And this is really important because the three gig standard covers a myriad of different image formats, mapping modes, and interface structures. And without the 352 payload ID, it's actually not possible to correctly identify what's been carried on any given link. Now, part of the problem here is that 7352 uh, was an optional uh, ancillary data um, packet in previous HD SDI interfaces and SD SDI interfaces. Um, but it, I think the advice here really is that you, you, for any three gig piece of equipment, you really ought to make sure that um, it is correctly implementing the payload ID uh, before you make any purchases or installations because uh, like I said, without that payload ID, it's not possible for equipment to really understand exactly what's being carried on the 3 gig link. Embedded audio. So level A, level BDL, and level BDS, the three mapping modes of the 3 gig standard, 
they can all carry up to 32 audio channels. But channel assignments and identification are different between the mapping modes. For example, Level A uses eight separate audio groups, each of which carries four channels, uh, in accordance with 7299-1 and 7299-2. And in the Level A mapping, all 32 channels are uniquely identified and can be easily uh, extracted. Level BDL, the dual stream mapping mode, which is based on 7372 dueling, um, also can carry 32 channels of audio, but these are um, two channels, uh, two streams, if you like, of 16 channels each in accordance with 7299-1. So the only way that you can identify um, you know, which channels are 1 to 16 and which ones are 17 to 32, in this case, is to actually inspect the dual link, link A and link B structure that's carried on the 3 gig interface. Level BDS, which is the dual stream um, mapping, it's very similar to the level BDL in, in the fact that it can carry two links of 16 channels each, but in this case, there is absolutely no audio channel assignment. And so again, you know, the, the uh, advice really is to be careful when considering embedded audio in three gig systems and really make sure that um, your system is correctly working, especially if it's a mixed level A, level B system, and that the uh, channel uh, identification for up to 32 channels of audio is correctly handled in the system. Um, Really, uh, I guess the extra care uh, point which is made here is that when you're upgrading from a dual one and a half gig system, ST372, or even from a one and a half gig ST292 system today, you need to take a little bit of care uh, when rolling out three gig um, systems with regards to embedded audio and support for multiple channels. So in summary then, the 3 gig SDI document suite really is a continuation of Senti's evolutionary approach to the development of SDI interfaces. And, you know, it's really allowed broadcasters to extend their return on investment for um, the capital investment they've made in terms of upgrades to 3 gig SDI core infrastructure. Um, and it allows broadcasters to continue to use that core infrastructure as they start transitioning uh, to supporting emerging production image formats such as UHD TV, um, D, uh, D Cinema at high frame rate, and um, 3D, of course. And the Duolink and Codlink 3 gig SDI uh, standards that have been uh, introduced or will be fully published by the end of this year really is a bit of a pragmatic solution uh, to solving that disparity um, in bandwidth. And, and it covers, you could argue, the most common 2D and 3D uh, formats that broadcasters are going to want to um, start experimenting with in the short term over the next two to five years. A multi-link interface is, however, always, of course, uh, uh, kind of an interim solution. It's not uh, desirable. And what's desirable is a single link interface. Um, and in the tradition of SENTI interface standards, um, of course, um, there is also a continuing work uh, within SEMTI to continue that development of uh, the SDI interface. So this contemplates beyond 3 gig SDI. Eventually, you know, those high frame rate, high resolution image formats are going to become the norm for production within broadcast facilities. And at that time, there will definitely need to be a new core infrastructure and new real-time streaming interface data rate and build out. Um, one of the questions that is before the industry, though, is can we continue with that um, evolution of the SDI interface while we continue to repurpose that installed infrastructure, or will a, a completely revolutionary approach be required? Well, in time-honored tradition, SEMTI is continuing uh, with the development of SDI, and they have formed a new working group within the TC32NF committee. That's 32NF70, the working group on UHD SDI. And that group is uh, tasked with uh, coming up with uh, you know, the future evolution of SDI, uh, hopefully that, uh, in a way that allows broadcasters to continue to repurpose their infrastructure. Um, as mentioned here, that really is a topic for another time, but it, it takes uh, beyond 3 gig SDI 
um, and it takes uh, the SDI interface to new levels in support of emerging UHDTV1, UHDTV2 uh, push and image uh, production. And I would uh, like to uh, ask everybody who has an interest in this topic to join 70, to join the 32 and F70 working group and contribute to the development of this continuing evolution of SDI. Thanks very much, everybody, for listening, and uh, over to Joe. Thank you, John. And let's see, you should be able to hear me, I think. Yes, I'm all unmuted. Um, we do have one question so far, and I do encourage everybody to uh, queue your questions in the question box down towards the bottom of your control panel. But the first question comes from Walt, and he asks, does the working group think IP interfaces will supplant SDI interfaces? So um, the, the working group, the 32 and F70 working group, has a specific mandate and scope to look um, only at uh, real-time streaming media interfaces, i.e. an evolution of SDI. Um, to speak specifically to the question of supplanting uh, our traditional SDI interface with IP, um, I think it's fair to say that uh, it's horses for courses, and both will happily coexist. Um, IP... Um, Standards such as the uh, SD2022 uh, document suite, which uh, standardizes uh, the transport of baseband video signals over IP, uh, can certainly address uh, some of the um, requirements for uh, real-time streaming, but even they are limited in terms of their bandwidth support. Um, and so, um, you know, whether it's a, a, an evolution of SDI over existing infrastructure, or whether it's a revolutionary change to IP, I think, in my opinion, that the two will exist. And the 32 and F70 group is uh, actually focused on the evolution of SDI. I would suggest that um, further work on the development of IP uh, transport of baseband um, video signals would be better handled in the 32 and F70, uh, 60, sorry, uh, working group where the SD2022 a document suite was developed. Great. Our next question. Let's see. It relates to something you said previously. It says, uh, that would be a lot of new copper. Can you explain the fiber arrangements? One fiber connection per quad with multiplexed streams? Okay. Um, I'm not quite sure uh, the context of that question um, or the, the real ask, but I'll try and answer. Um, when we move to dual link and quad link interfaces, um, basically in terms of the three gig standards that currently exist for the file layer, it is literally meaning there are four coax cables or there are four fiber um, cable connections uh, for the quad link interface or two for the dual link interface. In actual fact, during the presentation, when we were looking at the standards, I tried to illustrate that off to the side with uh, pictures of the uh, typical interfaces that you might see um, within a broadcast facility. So, for example, I was showing uh, one, two, or four um, cables with BNC connectors, um, an SFP form factor optical module, and there was actually another optical form factor in those images uh, for you to go back and look at and consider later which is con called the QSFP, or Quad SFP Optical Form Factor. And that particular module type, which is borrowed for the data, data center, um, can carry uh, actually up to eight signals uh, on an optical parallel file. So I'm not sure if that answered the question, but um, open to a comeback uh, on that. Thank you. And our next question comes from Keith. What direction do you see cable connectorization going? Are the DIN 1.0 slash 2.3 connectors grabbing a foothold? How well are the new 4.5 gigahertz rated VNCs performing in these new demanding applications? Uh, yeah, um, I touched on that briefly. In 2012, uh, there was a revision to 7044, which is the, the physical layer standard for 3 gig. And that part of that revision was deliberately to allow for these new um, H, uh, BNC type connectors uh, to be used within uh, 3 gig 
SDI facilities. In terms of um, manufacturers' compliance with 7044 on the connector front, um, I think today, uh, from all of our experience here at Semtech, um, typically connectors of all types are very well margined uh, in terms of the uh, 424 standard, the three peak standard. And in fact, um, although I'm going a little bit off topic here, um, it's the fact that those connectors are so well margined that we've been able to um, consider uh, adopting higher serial digital interface rates such as the 6 gig SDI standard. Now specifically with regard to the different form factors that were mentioned, um, really um, from a, an electrical performance point of view, there are some advantages to moving to a smaller form factor, but that really is not the main reason to, to look at those smaller form factor uh, connectors. The real advantage there is in uh, faceplate density. By moving from the traditional BNC to the smaller form factors that were mentioned, um, you, know, you can get an awful lot more connectivity crammed into a much smaller space. And in general, you know, those connectors are all really good. They're well over margin for the three gig standard. Um, and we traditionally uh, typically don't really see an awful lot of um, performance degradation from uh, connector choice. Okay. Okay, and we do have three questions in the queue, and they all do relate to the um, higher bandwidths. And I'm not sure if this is a fair question or not, John. I will ask it. Of, uh, I'll ask you anyway, and let you defer. And we certainly don't want to um, promote any particular organization or um, you know criticize any particular organization. But uh, the question is. What do you think about the 6G SDI interfaces currently provided by a few manufacturers? It's actually quite a, a complicated answer. Um, again, the 6 gig interface uh, that has been rolled out, and, and today it's proprietary, although, as I mentioned earlier, SEMTI are taking steps uh, to actually uh, standardize uh, that interface. But it really was a, a born out of, of a need uh, to support, um, really it started off with uh, cinema production. So a low frame rate, um, uh, 4K uh, cinema production and a high dynamic range 2K cinema production. Um, but it is interesting to note that there are moves afoot around the world to consider high frame rate HD TV uh, production and emission. Um, just recently within Europe, there's been a lot of discussion and recommendation, for example, about producing um, 1080p, 100 and 120 hertz um, for uh, broadcast, mainly for sport production and things like that. And that 6 gig interface is an ideal data rate for um, supporting uh, those kinds of emerging requirements. The other good thing about the 6 gig standard or the 6 gig interface is that it absolutely will work over existing core infrastructure. If you've rolled out a core infrastructure in support of 7424, i.e. 3 gig SDI compliant infrastructure, 6 gig will work over that um, standard infrastructure. It's not quite the same, or it's not quite so easy if you move to higher data rates such as 10 gig uh, or 12 gig or 24 over data rates. So I think you know that 6 gig uh, interface is uh, gaining an awful lot of momentum within the industry, basically based on pragmatic needs. So I think that's as diplomatic as I can be. <laughs> you did very well. Um, the, Pierre asks, he adds to that, he, he uh, piggybacks on that question. What about 12G SDI? Um, come to our booth at IBC. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dan asks, how quickly do you see compliant test gear hitting the market for UHD TV1? So again, that depends on if we're talking multi-link 3 gig or some of the data rate. Um, you know, from a physical layer uh, point of view, it, dual link 3 gig, quad link 3 gig, all your standard test equipment that exists today can be used uh, for, for looking at compliance streams in that case. Um, again, for emerging interfaces such as 6 gig, 12 gig, 24, whatever the next generation standard is going to be, 
Um, there are developments ongoing with regards to test equipment uh, for those interfaces. Again, I think the best thing I can say at this point is uh, have a look at IBC. You will see some announcements uh, from some equipment manufacturers um, specifically targeting uh, test equipment for other data rates. Very good. And that does conclude our questions, John. I uh, want to thank you for taking time to present this interesting webcast to our guests and to, uh, to me also. I learned a, a thing or two. I'd like to thank our guests also for taking time out of their schedules to be with us. If you are, are going to uh, IBC, safe travels, everybody. Take care. And we'll see you next time on SIMTI Standards Update. Thank you. Bye.